how Billy Connolly is really sweet, but he loves the Beverly Center. <laughs> he goes, so he, he'll say to Norm, say, Norm, have you been to the Beverly Center? It's brilliant. They have an international oh, yeah. food court. Yeah, it sounds like you really like that Beverly Center over there, huh? Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> sure. yeah. How did the Beverly Center right there? <laughs> hey, you got it. Be- they got an inter- you can have any food you want. Yeah, it sounds China. like they got a lot of food over there at that <laughs> Beverly Center. <laughs> <laughs> They don't, they don't got any of them wiener dogs in there, do they? <laughs> Impressions you thought you'd never need. <laughs> Man, that is a useless fucking skill you got right there. Yeah, like, you can do oh, Norm McDonald? You haven't heard my Kevin McDonald. Oh, well, maybe I'll just sort into my Kevin McDonald right now. Whoa! Oh, my God! 20 years. Did you, so you, so really did, when did you start yeah. doing comedy? And, uh, did you start doing stand-up, or were you like a sketch improv guy? What no, you no, I, I, I was a drummer in punk rock bands, but the, uh, the, you can't get uh, any of the girls to notice you if you're the drummer. So I, I, and I want to or a comic. Oh, no. I, oh, no. Really? You're playing the wrong places. No, the so, drummer, uh, as a drummer, you have, to, you have to move all the equipment after the show. You don't get to toss it. Yeah, yeah. You're Jonah's good. a drummer, too. So right, you right. So you, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes. That, that's it's right. a horrible existence. It is. Yeah. <laughs> so I... So what I wanted to do... What happened was the, the very... I was doing this... Uh, there was a punk rock uh, festival in London... Uh, it must have been 1978, 79, and it was in this big art gallery, and it was uh, there was a lot of different punk bands from Scotland and, and you know all over the country, and we were all there in this big posh art gallery, and all these Cockney punks were in the front row, and my, this is my first stand-up, and somebody said, "Hey, uh, Craig, you're funny," and it, what they meant was I got drunk louder than everybody else, but they said, <laughs> "Craig, you're funny. Go and introduce, the, say some funny stuff to start off this festival." So I walked out, and I I, I thought. As many people do, I'll wear a comedy outfit and then, you know, <laughs> we'll see where we go from there. And so I walked out wearing a kilt and a, and a sort of sparkly uh, Liberace jacket. And I was so frightened that my knees were actually moving. You could see my knees moving. And all these Cockney punks started going, his knees are fucking knocking. <laughs> his knee, and then they started chatting, his knees are knocking, his knees are knocking, his knees. But what, what, what just, I only want to stop you for a second uh, and just say that what you have to understand about comedy in the British Isles is that they fuck, they love to fuck with you. I didn't, I did the first time I did come there, I had the same experience. Yes, they, they, Any slight thing, and they'll be like, ah, cunt, which is charming over there for some yeah. reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a very different word. You have to be careful with, with the C word in America. Obviously, it, it upsets a lot of people, and it's a very dangerous and, and, and controversial word. But in Scotland, the word cunt is actually kind of like, um, you know, pal. Like, you know, yeah. hey, you will, I, I mean, really, you would say about someone, he's a lovely big cunt, I mean, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Or you go, you cheeky cunt, get out of here. I love that Scottish cartoon, The Anna Cunts. Uh, oh, was, really? Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> animated cunts. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> and then I explain it at the end. They're animated yeah, cunts. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I shortened it. Yeah. Um, but I, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So, you. so you go up and your knees are knocking, and then they're. And no, they're, that was it, yeah. Was oh, that gone. was a good yeah, story. Yeah, okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then but you, a little girl said cunt twice on Good Morning America today. What? Yeah, some little girl. And now she has 18,000 Twitter followers. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, I looked today, I don't yeah, know why. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> that really <laughs> happened? Yeah. A high school girl's I Twitter. I didn't look it up. Patton Oswalt tweeted something with her name in it, and I clicked on it, and then I Oh, because wow. Patton tweeted it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't know who it was. So you... Uh, so then you, did you, you obviously started doing stand-up then, or did you take a break for no, a while? I just, no, I just kept, I kept doing it because I couldn't stay in bands long. Any band that was in, every, I would either get kicked out or the, someone else would go to jail or something <laughs> like that. I mean, keeping a group of people together, you know, punk rock people, it doesn't really work very well. Right. So I ended up doing it, and it was a, it was a profession which was very forgiving of uh, drunkenness and, and tardiness. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. forgiving is a kind word. I would say maybe encouraging. Um, no, I don't think they actually encouraged it. I think that um, the, the, they just would... I was the only person that would do it. Like, um, the, in Scotland, uh, not a lot of people want to stand out from the crowd because you'll get killed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was too drunk to notice. <laughs> I mean, really, I, was, I think I was too drunk to, notice what, to know what I was doing for the first couple of years, and then by that time, I started making money, so I uh, kept going. Did you, did you ever have... Because I, I know I had this... Um, and as I am narcissistic, I'm going to make it about me for a sec. Uh, mm-hmm. Did you kind of have that moment when you quit drinking where you're like, what if I'm not funny anymore? Uh, what if it was the blues? I have that moment 
There, right there. I've had it again. I, <laughs> right there. I, was like? it, it, that every day it arrived. It, it just it, like I every I probably have that thought more than I actually fart. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah. Again, right there. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that was good. No, no, that, that was I was fine there. I just farted. Oh, that was the uh, fart part. Yeah, that's good. Get the oil paints. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. That was a call oh, back. Yeah, right, You've all right, been right, a party right, to right, a right, call back. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so when, at, at what point did you, because I know uh, you talked a little bit about this backstage when Adam was here, and, and I, uh, but you said you were really good friends with Peter Cook. I was, yeah. Peter Cook was, uh, I, I'd written a, a script. Uh, Peter Cook, who I, I loved more than any other of that particular If, if you're an American and you don't know, Peter Cook is a brilliant British Comedian. If, if to, a lot of American people know him as the the pontiff from Princess Bride, that marriage is a beautiful thing. Uh, Peter Cook was yeah, it was am- probably amazing. the least interesting thing he ever did. But he, he was uh, with Dudley Moore, the clean tape. Yeah, no, he was it. fantastic, very very funny. I, I, I mean, a, a very very wild mind. Uh, and um, he, uh, I wrote a, a script because uh, you know for Channel Four in Britain, which is kind of like I don't know this. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> oh, thank you. No, no. <laughs> No, no, Channel yeah, 4 is... That's, that's good. That's <laughs> the experimental they do. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, 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 thank you, thank you. All right, so um, I wrote this script for... And I thought, I'll send it to Peter Cook to see if he'll be in it. And he, he actually, he followed comedy... This is even really... Bef- this is before the internet. He was just aware of young comedians. And, mm-hmm. uh, and he agreed to play my father in this... Uh, in this thing, he was a notorious drunk, Peter. He had this house up in Hampstead. So I went to meet him for the first time. I got the call from his agent. You have to go and meet Mr. Cook. And I went up to his house in Hampstead and rang the doorbell. Uh, and I came on. This was on a Monday morning, about 11 o'clock. And he came on the intercom and he said, Who is it? <laughs> and I said, It's uh, Craig Ferguson, Peter. I've come to talk to you about the show. And he went, Ah, oh, yes. Come on in. <laughs> Breakfast is in the fridge. <laughs> And I went inside, the, the door clicked open, I went inside, and it was a big, tall house, and I, uh, you know, I, I didn't know what to do, and he was right up at the top of these things, the kitchen was right inside the front door, and I, I looked up, he was wearing a toweling robe, the first part of I, saw, I saw of him was his cock, and, uh, <laughs> and I was like, uh, good morning, and he went, good morning, and I said, uh, right, he said, breakfast is in the fridge, and I, I went to the fridge, and the only, I opened the fridge door, and there were only two uh, cans of hard cider, uh, a, sort of a real alcoholic beverage called Strongbow. It's, 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 yeah, yeah, right. It's, it's kind of a street drunk beverage. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a real. Um, and so there were two cans of that. And so I shouted up to Peter, Peter, I, I can only see two cans of cider. And he said, I repeat, breakfast <laughs> is in the fridge. And he came downstairs and, and we drank the. It was the first time I'd get drunk in the morning. It was. It's, uh, look, if you're an alcoholic, there's nothing better. <laughs> I, uh, it really that, takes the edge off oh, the previous... Oh, I see that sweating all day, worrying about when am I going to start drinking. It removes all that. <laughs> yeah, it does. You just get stuck right in right away. Well, you know, because a lot of people think that the reason that you get hungover is because you're dehydrated, and it's not. The, the reason is you, you're, you're flooding with your body with so many toxins that it's an immediate withdrawal when you stop. And so right. when you have that, that, that eye-opener... Yeah. You're, you're immediately sating the, that sort of, you know... That, Whatever you say, college, all yeah. I knew is... <laughs> all I knew is it made me feel very, very pleasant. I'm going to yeah. bore the drunkenness right out of you. <laughs> so, uh, so, how long, so you guys became pretty good friends. We became uh, reasonably good friends. I mean, he was a comedy giant and I was this whip at his, his heels, but he was very, very nice to me. And, uh, and, and you know, sadly, he, he uh, kind of, you know passed on from alcoholism yeah. a couple of years later. But he was a very, very nice man. And, and such an odd uh, kind of surrealist. Uh, and and uh, he, he, was, he was very, very... It was a surprise to me. Up until that point, I had loathed the English establishment, the Oxford and Cambridge establishment. I had I'd been brought up to believe that these people were the enemy. And he, he was certainly of that and extremely seditious in his thought. He told me about a, a time very early in his career because he hated the royal family. And uh, he got this uh, call from when he was getting very famous as, uh, you know, with Dudley Moore mm-hmm. and Not Only But Also. He got a call one day. He, said, he told me this story. He said, I got a call one day from uh, the phone rang and I heard this voice saying, this is the equity of his royal highness, Prince Charles. And he went, oh, yes. And he said, yes, uh, but the, the, his royal highness is a great fan of your work. He's wondering if you were free for dinner. 
uh, on the 17th. He said, the 17th of March or the 17th of April? He said, uh, the 17th of March. He said, so what I did, Craig, is I got the telephone directory and I, I flipped it next to the phone to make it sound like I was looking through my diary. And I said, ah, the 17th of March. I find I'm watching television that <laughs> evening. <laughs> I mean, that's fucking balls. That's ballsy. You know what I mean? That, and I, 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 always, I always kind of thought Peter had that fearlessness. I mean, uh, uh, he had many other demons that, that came after him, but he was uh, fearless in the, in, the, in the face of pomposity and, and, uh, and undeserved recognition. And I, and I kind of, I, if I have anything that I would try and aspire to in my life, it is to be like that. To, to say, you know, uh, okay, I, I, I don't care how powerful you are, I'm going to have a go. Yeah. Um, it, it, it eventually, of course, will destroy me, but, I, uh, <laughs> but I'll, have, I'll, I'll get a few laughs on the way, I think. Well, I want, to, uh, I want to continue on that thought for a second, but we have to pause for a quick uh, uh, sponsorship break. Uh, I'd like to invite out our good friend, Nerdist Podcast friend, uh, Mr. Sam Levine is here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Sam Levine. We're introducing some sponsorships on the podcast. Chris, Chris, yes. Chris, we talked about this. Sorcerer, Sam Levine, one more time. Oh, uh, wow. Sweet. It's got the scepter there. I'll do some sound effects for you. Thank you. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Sorcerer Sam Levine. Audible.com is the interweb's leading provider of spoken audio entertainment, information, and educational programming. Oh. If someone had the power to say, charm a book into the gift of speech, this is exactly what it would sound like. You'll find yourself effortlessly breezing through over 75,000 titles to choose from, like you're some sort of kind of dark wizard controlling the elements with your mouse-shaped wand. What's that? You say there's a book you cannot find? Well, you are a filthy orc and liar! Wow. Will yourself over to www.audiblepodcast.com slash Nerdist. Post haste! If you sign up for a free trial, your computing device shall be imbued with a free audiobook. Might I recommend some of my favorites, such as Belgarth the Sorcerer by David Eddings, or perhaps even The Sorcerer of the North, Ranger's Apprentice, Book 5 by John Flanagan. Do you have a book that is not a sorcerer in the title? Some other ones? <laughs> How about uh, Shadow Mancer? That's way Steve weirder. Taylor. That is way weirder. <laughs> Magical Notes and uh, Magic, spelled with a K here. Okay. Uh, this bestowance only valid in the realms of the United States and the maple dwellers of Canada. Sam, I, you, no, no one said you had to dress like a sorcerer. <laughs> I mean, just FY information. Mm-hmm. You think this is pretend, huh, Hardwick? Pretend. <laughs> Well, you've made yourself an enemy here today. Next time you slumber, I shall find you in your dreams and shit on your soul! <laughs> I'm not, not exactly sure how I'm going to invade your dreams, but the logistics are a little confused. I have a spreadsheet in my car <laughs> that would help clear things up, but I forgot to bring it in. Sam Levine, the sorcerer! Oh! Sam Levine, everyone! Oh. Star of Inglorious Bastards and Freaks and Geeks. I'm. See, it was funny, and we got to learn about an interesting new product. That's right, and I'm sure Audible won't have a problem at all with all the soul shitting talk that surfaced. <laughs> they know what they signed up for. They signed up, right? I don't think they know what they signed up for. <laughs> uh, can I just. Uh, is, that was a real thing? Yeah. Was, <laughs> yes, that was a real human. See, you have sponsors like. Coca-Cola. No, no, no. I don't have. I have sponsors like Viagra and uh, what's that one that makes Viagra. you Viagra. Yeah, adorable. Yeah. adorable. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's either boner pills or sleep meds. That's what's on <laughs> my show. Or what's the other the shower? Only if they could combine that. those two pills. <laughs> I could say, hey, 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 heroin, Junior. Heroin. <laughs> He's oh. young. He doesn't know. Yeah. He's young. 
What's wrong with you oh, kids? Oh. Hipsters, oh. hipsters don't know from heroin. They like absinthe. They don't know. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I thought I would try a sponsorship on the show so I could start paying these nerds over here.